This is your Libertarian Crusaders episode number 35. And today we have a special guest, Lynn Albright, mother of Ross Albright, who it's a great inspiration for a lot of people who are trying to find freer markets and ways to resolve cons- conflict uh, resolutions. And I think, uh, as I was just mentioning earlier, you know, if there was a mother award for the year, Lynn wins it hands down every year. Um, I think what you've been doing in your crusade for him is, I can't imagine like uh, how you, how could even be in your shoes, but you're still at it every day and every year uh, unrelentingly. Uh, you're in a way uh, the mother's version of Killdozer and just uh, unrelenting <laughs> putting the government, uh, you know, trying to stop your voice and just trying to give up on everything. Um, I, I wish all mothers were kind of like in, in your position and has that and uh, unconquerable spirit. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, how, how did you start uh, on this journey to, to start this campaign? After a- well, I started because Ross got arrested and I was completely shocked and um, was hearing it was immediate media firestorm when it happened. It wasn't, it was like we were informed by a Reuters reporter and then all of a sudden it was on the news and, and, uh, media was driving by our house and our neighbors were freaking out. <laughs> it was just, you know, and then emails pouring in and phone. I was like a tsunami hit our family. And it's actually been like that ever, not like that intensity, but it's my life's never been the same since then. And um, I just remember lying in bed going, this isn't who he is. They're lying. They're saying things about my son. I know my son. This is not who he is. And so I got with a, um, a friend of his from high school who loves Ross and so many people who know him really love him. And he's, he has a web thing. And he, he said, well, I'll, I'll help you put up a page, you know? And I just put up a page, you know, what, who Ross is and who Ross isn't. And started from there. And um, we also got a lot of people stepping up to help pay lawyers and all of that. And so um, it just hasn't stopped. I mean, I just can't stop because I, what am I going to do? Just let him rot in prison till he dies. I I just can't, I can't, I can't. I I told him I'm trapped by mother love Ross and you better take care of me. (laughs) And uh, he said, I will be your slave. And I said, okay, that was a good, that was the right answer. I'm glad to hear that. (laughs) <laughs> Any right. Mother's Day <laughs> gifts down yeah. the pipeline. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, um, yeah, he's worth it, you know, and um, look, it, it's been very hard. It's been it's co- very costly in many ways, not just money, but just everything, so many things. It's hard on families when someone was arrested and put in prison. It destroys families. Um, but at the same time, there have been many silver linings, um, like all the people the incredible people who I've gotten to know who've stepped up and supported us and walked with us on this journey. And it's really become a bigger fight for me because when you start to get to know and meet and see the people in the prison and their kids and their families and how so many of these people shouldn't be in there or the sentences are so over the top and punitive, it's just, it can't, it's got to stop. It's got to be fixed. It's wrong. And it's un-American and it's really not how it used to be in this country. It's become way worse. And, um, so you just keep going one day at a time. Just keep going (laughs) eyes on the prize, you know, and I do believe I am optimistic. I think Ross will one way or another, he will be free. I don't think he'll spend the rest of his life in there. I I can't can't even think about it. There's, um, with all this, uh, the Corona stuff, that's been, for example, and then they've released a great many people, even violent criminals, yeah, that, I know. like reinfending, especially like in New York. And you think some consideration then would be taken for Ross's plight and that he is a nonviolent offender uh, of a victimless crime, right? No less. But at least given the same kind of consideration to at least go home, he's never... Uh, had a pattern of behavior of uh, being on the run or anything like that. Um, and at least uh, go under house arrest. And they've given, uh, who, who, who are they given? They give, they, they give a lot of people house arrest, but I guess you have to have money to kind of influence the courts in that kind of manner. But for regular folks like us, 
Um, I think they see him as a threat um, for some reason. I think maybe they see him as a threat as their under the credibility or um, the alternatives that he has provided uh, for free people and free trade. But these are stuff that uh, the alter- these are not just really alternative. These are just uh, peaceful ways that government is to circumnavigate this, the environment the government has caused to make a lot of these interactions we have with people that could possibly be violent or could possibly be uh, without a need for government influence in those kind of interactions. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's not, it, it pains me to see that he's been in there now um, for how long now? He's on his, he's starting his eighth year, um, I believe in October um, will be his eighth year that he'll start. He's, he's, it's, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's horrendous. It's, it, it's so many productive years of his, you know, he's, he, he was 26 when he created Silk Road. He's 36 now. And, um, you know, as you say, he's completely nonviolent, peaceful person. His life history supports that. His time in prison supports that. He's a threat to no one. Um, it's costing the, ta- it'll cost the taxpayers if God forbid he is in there for the whole sentence, which I, again, I don't believe he will be uh, over $2 million. And he's one of many hundreds of thousands of people that are costing taxpayers so much money and for no reason. And um, yeah, they could put him, he could be an under house arrest. He could be wear an ankle bracelet, all those things, do community service, whatever. Uh but they make a lot of money off of these prisoners. So the whole uh, prison industrial complex, both private and public, is a huge monstrous industry. And the people in the prisons are the inventory. They are the inventory. They're who, and, and so they want them in there. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if you're making money off of human beings, you're engaged in human trafficking. Right. That is my, well, that's what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, in so many ways. Yeah, the COVID thing's been pretty rough because um, as a security measure and as a precaution, they've had him and all the other people in the prison under lockdown 22 hours a day with um, only two hours out to take a shower, make a call, um, you know, since March. That is a, that's tough that you're in an eight by 10 cell, 22 hours a day, every day. And then recently because of the riots, they, the entire Bureau of Prisons across the country was locked down 24 hours a day. Thankfully that has now uh, been lifted, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy. Well, it's the collective punishment aspect. <clears throat> You know, they have the mandatory minimum sentences and then they, <clears throat> you know, I think that Ross is more of a political prisoner than anything else. This is why Chuck Schumer's appointed judge had to hand down such a strict sentence. And now I'm pretty sure she's retired. But Ross, uh, he was a threat or the system that he built was a threat to the pharmaceutical companies. You know, there was a whole lot of markets that he would have removed a monopoly from, and they didn't appreciate a system like that that competed with them. Yeah, I, I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, I, and, you know, not to mention the monopoly on money. <laughs> I think Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin and the fact that it was uh, the only currency exchanged on the site and it really introduced Bitcoin to the world um, was what really, really got him in trouble. And, um, <clears throat> made him, you know, target. And, um, that, I mean, the money is, you don't mess with the money. Right. And, um, so, but I, I, yeah, I don't think that drugs, their concern for drugs was really the motivation for coming down so hard on Ross because the biggest drug seller on Silk Road got 10 years. He has the same offense level as Ross and Ross wasn't uh, convicted or accused of selling drugs himself. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think it was the drugs. I think it was the, the idea, a very dangerous idea of a free market, private market using a private currency that was out of government's control. Of course, now it's yeah. everywhere and all of that. But at the time, it was a different world. And people hadn't heard of the deep web much. And it was really scary. And, you know, not that there aren't bad things on there and on the regular Internet. But, um, you know, 
Bitcoin was considered a very scary thing. And, you know, in those days, cannabis, which was the main drug that was exchanged, user amounts of cannabis exchanged on the site, was mostly all, all, all cannabis. It wasn't, um, there were hard drugs, people chose to do that, and I'm not condoning it, but uh, it's mostly cannabis. Well, then cannabis was not legal in so many places like it is now. It's practically mainstream. So it's a different world. I mean, I just was in uh, San Francisco a few months ago. There's a big billboard. We deliver a cannabis to your door. And I'm like, hang on a second. Isn't that what, so, you know, kind of what Silk Road was doing. So um, now, you know, but Ross is in a cage for the rest of his life. You know, and that's the other thing. It's such an abuse of government power to give these kind of sentences. And like I say, Ross is not the only one. He's not unique. Um, there are people serving life sentences for marijuana. One of them, Ross knew in Cal uh, Colorado when he was in prison there. Well, it's legal in Colorado, but the guy's in a federal penitentiary in, in Colorado serving life for marijuana. This is evil. This is a terrible thing. And it doesn't even make any sense. So, and then like you say, they've released, I'm surprised they've released violent people uh, over the COVID thing. I'm very surprised. Not too, not probably a good idea. Uh, there's lots of nonviolent people you could let out, lots. Um, over 60% of the prisons are nonviolent, mostly drug offenders. Over 60%, it's the drug war is fueling the whole mass incarceration complex. So, um, yeah, I, I think it was political. And it kind of was um, a couple of months before Silk Road was uh, taken down and Ross was arrested and all that happened. The NSA came out later, two years ago, Snowden revealed, his papers revealed, The Intercept published it, that the NSA was urgently tracking Bitcoin users and, and you know, trying to catch them as if they're terrorists. That's what the NSA is supposed to do. So it was obviously to use the full force of the NSA and the federal government to go after Bitcoin users obviously shows their concern. You know, the, um, I see so many cases of people's lives actually being saved by having used uh, Silk Road and, his, and Ross's yeah. platform. And I wonder, um, does that come up as a, as a potential, uh, in the effort to free Ross, you know, does that get, included and say, Hey, by the way, you know, we have a bunch of people who can attest that they didn't have to risk their life in some shady back alley, you know, buying, buying weed or something like that. They were able to do it safely. Mm -hmm. And by the way, not only that, but uh, people were able to get um, CBD uh, formulas for their children's life threatening uh, seizures that once Silk Road was taken down, they couldn't get and their kids' lives were literally at risk. Um, you know, things like that. You know, we the the harm reduction idea and theory was, you know, presented at sentencing. It didn't, what did not, was not received well uh, at the court, by the court. Um, it, it has been established. Yes, that's true. It just makes sense that it would be safer, but it's not uh, received very well by the powers that be in the courts now. They don't want to hear that. You know, it's illegal, it's illegal. And they say, well, you've got to change the law. We can't. Even the uh, appellate judge in the Second Circuit said, he goes, look, I probably wouldn't have given, or not word for word, but basically, I might not have given this horrible sentence, but she was in her discretion. And, you know, we can't, you've got to go in there and change the law. And we may look back on this as a terrible thing that, that, that this person has been, but, you know, what are we going to do? So that's kind of, they don't care if it's right and reduces harm. Really. Right. And, and, uh, the, uh, that were, uh, discovered to have, uh, I was tampering with evidence and trying to blackmail him and, uh, stole all those Bitcoins as two undercover agents. Um, but you know, that was never really taken much into consideration even during the appeal. And I think that's kind of outrageous. It's kind of in a way for them kind of to cover their tracks and I want to well, first, we don't know if it was Ross. In fact, he says it wasn't him. And so does Curtis Green, who was the person involved in it, who they faked his death and all that. So just to be clear, the person who was part of that anonymous chat, if there even was a second party and it wasn't written all by the agent, 
which I think is very possible since right. their heat, the agent is now in prison for right. corruption. Um, uh, <clears throat> um, no, that was not charged. It wasn't charged at trial. It wasn't part of the trial, despite what you will people say. You know, oh, he's in prison because he murdered people. I'm like, well, first of all, who was murdered? No one. No one. It was never charged. It was never convicted. That even went all the way to the Supreme Court because the judge, even though he was never, a jury never ruled on it, she brought it up at sentencing to justify her draconian sentence. Um, And that's a violation of the Sixth Amendment of the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights and the Sixth Amendment say, no, one judge doesn't get to decide if you're guilty or not guilty, it's a jury of your peers. And that's 12 people. And there's a reason for that. And so just because Catherine Forrest believed the prosecution, you know, that they said, oh yeah, he, he, it's him, it's him, trust us, with no proof, and, and said it, and justified her sentence, doesn't mean, it wasn't, it was not convicted. And then based on the corrupt agent's um, material, in, in Maryland, there was a separate indictment that did include it, but it was never prosecuted, never brought to trial. And then now it's been dismissed with prejudice. So it's never can be brought up again. There is nothing in the legal system about murder for hire against Ross. And yet people persist, not as much as they used to, but they still persist that Ross did this. And the media, of course, loves that stuff. They love it. You know, it's like, hey, good boy gone bad. And it's exciting. And and so the media really went to town on it. And the, they, they do that with the government's government gives them material and they run with it. Right. <laughs> you think you know, um, kind of events of uh, people have incurred with government, even like uh, Netflix in terms of like Waco, I was like that they can be twisted, that they will twist the truth, that they would uh, twist the events and what happened. Uh, and it's not too far fetched when you see a, a numerous patterns of that kind of behavior, then why wouldn't they do it in this, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, well, they totally did. I, I, they definitely lied. Lots of media outlets lied about what Silk, just recently, and this is just literally maybe a couple of weeks ago, um, a, a very, um, a, a supporter, a very generous supporter put up a billboard in Times Square, Free Ross, and our, our website. So there's a billboard in Times Square, Free Ross. And um, someone who writes about Times Square wrote this piece and she was mad because this was up there. And she goes, Silk Road was about drugs, human uh, trafficking and child exploitation. This is a complete falsehood. Now the drugs are, they, there were drugs because that was considered a free choice between two people. But the, so the site was based on the non-aggression principle of voluntary interaction meaning that a third party could not be, was, be harmed by the transaction or it was not allowed on there. So for example, nothing to do with child exploitation because a child would be hurt or stolen property or um, weapons or violent services and all. And that's part of the government's own evidence. And I wrote the woman who wrote it. I tweeted at her and she didn't, I don't believe she's changed it. She, you know, it's like, they don't care. They just say stuff. Newsweek did it too on the cover. Something like, it's and all this stuff that wasn't even true, but people, you know, they see it and it, it's out there and it's very, very damaging. But, you know, after all this, I don't even, I don't believe anything. I read the media. I have to really get some valid <laughs> backing up because they, I think they lie all the time. Agreed. I, stopped, uh, I used to be a Newsweek uh, subscriber many years ago, but they, <laughs> they just became garbage and had to stop. Garbage. Them. Yeah. Uh, I have to stop uh, collecting Times Magazine. Uh, I, I even have to stop collecting uh, National Geographic. It's, just, uh, it's no longer a factual basis. Like it's got to that point where, yes, a lot of the media stuff out there is just garbage now, full of misinformation and lies. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, on this uh, website, freeross.org. Uh, dot org. Dot org. Mm-hmm. Um, how many people assigned the, that's where they can find, people can find the petition? Yes, absolutely. Um, at, or you can go, yeah, freeross.org slash petition, or I think even now we've got it slash freeross now. Um, but yeah, um, my <clears throat> last I looked, I meant to look right before this, but last I looked, I believe it was over 320,000 people. Yeah, I see that right 320, now. 20,000 <laughs> people, more. It was above that a little bit. So that's the size of a bunch of people. 
I was so happy when we got to quarter of a million. Well, it's getting, you know, it's way above quarter of a million now. Right. We're, so we're headed towards half a million people. What is the uh, petition, uh, uh, the aim for the petition? You know, people go, well, just because you have these things and what's it going to do? And, and for, from my perspective, I think it's a PR tool that actually shows a movement. It shows support. It, um, you know, I can go to a legislator, for example, and say, I want your support with clemency. Look, we have this petition. 320,000 people would like you to do this thing. You know, it, I think it adds um, emphasis and momentum to the idea. And I think it makes it more acceptable because, you know, a lot of people think Ross is horrible. But I, I want to say that you can sign that petition, not, and he's not, by the way, he's a wonderful person, but in any case, um, you can sign that petition just knowing that a first time nonviolent offender was given double life plus 40 years without parole for something he did when he was 26 years old on a computer. This is out over the top, uh, excessive, draconian, horrific, and puts us all in peril. Because if he can get that sentence, so can other people. It sets a terrible precedent for excessive sentencing. So the, that's all the petition's about is the sentence. That's all we're asking the president to do is correct this terrible sentence. We're not saying Ross gets pardoned. We're saying, please let him out. Time served. That's enough of a sentence. He will never be a problem again. And he's a lot to contribute. But it's basically just the sentence is wrong. And that's all you're doing when you sign the petition. I'll be sure to sign it later. Pass that out. Um, Thank you. Oh, yeah. Please do and tell everybody about it. Um, the other cool thing that happened just before I came on was uh, Spike Cohen and Jen Jorgensen, the Libertarian candidates for president and vice president, published a letter to the president asking him to grant Ross clemency. And it's on their Facebook page. And um, yeah, I mean, how great of them when they're, I can imagine how busy they are that they did this. So. Yeah, it's really an issue that unites all libertarians. I mean, we we are famous for being so combative in between all of the various factions, but like I haven't met anybody who says, well, I don't believe, it, you know, and so that I think it's a good, uh, it, it's another good uniting point for us, but also in, in support of Ross. But, uh, you know, and just to compare it to like other stories that I've seen recently, I saw a um, former... Uh, basically a IRA uh, prisoner who had left Ireland in like 1988, moved to the United States, lived here ever since, was just deported because he's a terrorist. And he had a, apparently, but he had spent some time, like five years in jail in Ireland for some, some supposed terrorist activities, uh, like attacking some police or whatever. Anyway, the whole point that I gleaned from it is the government is willing to punish you for the rest of your life for something you do when you're a very young man, very unwise. Um, and it, it's, it seems like a, unfortunate because that's when you're liable to do stupid things. And this guy, it, you know, was able to do good things um, for the rest of his life. And so, so would Ross, if he was allowed out. Oh, he would. He's trying to now from prison. He's, he's publishing economic papers and the uh, people he cites are, it reading them and involved and, you know, he's bringing some value out there, even under these restricted conditions. You imagine what he could do, allowed some freedom. He can't even get on the internet, you know? Oh. And um, so absolutely. And, you know, who, who of us have not made some mistakes in our uh, mid twenties, you know, um, or done things that were reckless and maybe that wasn't such a great idea. Uh, and how many young people are so idealistic? And that's really what Ross is and was. You know, he, he was very on fire for freedom. He worked in the Ron Paul campaign. He um, was reading Austrian economics and all of that. And he, he, he wanted to have people have an experience of the free market, a real free market, and have privacy. And um, the intentions were all good. I'm not saying that all the results were good. But the, all the results um, on many sites are not good. Facebook uh, came out before Congress. They started tracking their drug sales for six months. And it turned out Facebook, uh, the people on Facebook sold 100,000 uh, more 
drugs in six months than Silk Road did the entire time. Something like crazy like that. Um, so plenty of things are going on on Facebook and even Amazon had, that had um, cyanide on there. And um, the mother was suing Amazon, Jeff Bezos and the vendor because her daughter bought it and killed herself with it tragically. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and of course, Craigslist and, you know, it's, yeah, <laughs> right. there's a lot out there. There is. And, and, and you know, uh, should the person who's responsible for that platform be in prison? It, obviously, no. Right. I think uh, I was just looking over this letter that you mentioned. It just, yeah, it just came out uh, an, an hour ago. Um, yeah, it just came out. Uh, yeah. that, that'd be a, a great thing if uh, Trump would take that into consideration um, and pardon. Usually a lot of pardons didn't really come out like, at the end of their last year. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, Obama did the same thing. And so, uh, especially with novel offenders, but this has garnered so much attention. Hopefully this does gain, gain some kind of traction and ground to kind of at least cross this desk into consideration. Um, at least to, uh, in the same way that he's been doing some criminal reforms lately in the past uh, year or two. Um, yeah, yes. Right. So it's like, you can't knock him out for that. So this kind of plays. No. Out. I think he has a lot of, um, look, he pushed through that first step act in spite of Mitch McConnell and other Republicans in Congress. Mm-hmm. And um, I give him credit for that. And uh, it wasn't enough, but it, you can't ever get enough, right? You got to always go in increments. And it was a first step. But that was Trump. Mm-hmm. And he's, he has given issued clemency to many people. And I think he really has a heart for it. Um, so I'm hopeful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think this is a great thing that Jorgensen Cohen is doing. That's something uh, we're definitely on board with that. Yeah. Um, we, I guess uh, Kurt was mentioning that, uh, do you have family out here in Virginia? I mean, where, where did- uh... I do. I do. Um, my sister lives in Richmond. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I sent her, uh, Ross's aunt. I mean, she was very much a part of his growing up and we raised our kids together, really. Um, and she's there and totally core supportive. And um, I'm going to see if I can get her to come. <laughs> To your event, your yeah. event in August, right? Yeah, it's in August. Are you having an event in August? Yes, it's, we call. Oh, you're not hearing me. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear now. Hear now, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah a, I have to say, I'm going to have her come. I'm going to see if she'll go to your event. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, um, it's a great. Uh, we, this is our sixth year doing it. Uh, oh. Yeah, so it's we established a really great, awesome community and family here that we kind of come together once a year, our flagship event, and it'd be a great opportunity to also pass out a lot of the free Ross pack yeah. information out there. That'd be great. Um, where is it? How far is it from Richmond? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's what an hour and a half drive Northwest. Oh, it's a really right. pretty country. Virginia is so beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and you move closer to, uh, to where he's being held. How many times have you had, yeah. uh, for that? I've moved, uh, moved, well, my husband and I moved to New York. Um, and we're there for four years, not in the city, but we'd go into the city to see him stuff. Next was Colorado, where he was moved to an actual penitentiary. Maximum security, be, not because he has, is a danger to anyone. And the BOP knows that. It's because of his life sentence. They automatically put you in a maximum because of flight risk. They think, well, people will try to get away. But when he came in, they said, what are you doing in here? They couldn't figure out why he was there. I mean, his, his security score would put him in a camp. But he ended up being in a very violent, gang-heavy, uh, very tough place for a year and a half or so. And um, still got along, got along with people. Um, you know, I remember him saying to me, hey, mom, gang members are people too. Hmm. They're people, hmm. you know? And so, you know, of course, I'm like, oh, I raised him to have a good peer group and all this stuff. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, there are some good people who have gotten a really bad deal. There's then there's but there's a lot of violent people in there. It's maximum security prison. It's a step down from a supermax. And finally, um, he was being pressured, which happens. He and another guy to beat up a snitch or someone they decided was a snitch. And he 
said, no, I'm not beating up somebody. I'm, that's not happening. I don't do that. I'm nonviolent. I'm not doing it. And that put him in danger. He had to put himself in protective custody very quickly. And um, that's an eight by 10 metal box, solitary for a while, then with a pretty difficult cellmate for a while and finally got moved to Tucson. And Tucson is a facility, they call it a safe yard where they put people who are targeted in the system, like someone who refuses to do this, also sex offenders, also cops, also people just who might be targeted, as well as drug offenders are in there and different people. But it's peaceful. It's not um, a violent place. And so that's huge, huge difference from what he was dealing with before. He doesn't have to be looking over his shoulder constantly and being on guard every minute because he could get killed. That's what he was living in. For a year and a half, uh, is he accept the letters? Could 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 people write him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on our website, uh, there's a well. The footer of every page, there's a way to communicate with me and with him. Also, there's a take action page, and at the bottom is his address as well. Um, yeah, absolutely, uh, you can write him. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that. Uh, where, where can we find some of his uh, works? He said that he's been writing. Um, is that on the website too, or does it have that? It is. Well, there's two places. One is on the website. It says, um, I think the page is who is Ross or meet Ross or something like that. I should know. Uh, and then you click it. And, um, I think anyway, it, one part of it says Ross's writings hmm. and then uh, also on medium.com he's publishing there too. I think, uh, like my mother always tells me, Cal, if you ever get in trouble, uh, call me. Uh, I'll say I did it. Uh, she says, if you ever kill anyone, I did it. If you ever get anything like Ghosty Joe's, just say, I take the blame. I say, I had the gun. I'll take it. Um, and when I, my mother says that she'll say like, I don't care what the crime is. Right. I still take it. Uh, I, I always thought of that as like, like proof. Like if you can ask your parent, like how much they love you. I was like, I don't yeah. care. This, right. I love you. I'll take it. Uh, you're, you're my, you know, I, I made you, I created you. I want you to have a great, right. right? Um, and hearing your stories, like, I, I, I didn't think I could like see another awesome mother until hearing about you, uh, and the things that you've done for your own son. And I, I applaud you a, a thousand times for that. I think that's, Thank uh, you. uh, how mother should be. Um, and of course, uh, for us here in Richmond, uh, we would take great, uh, consideration and, and Karen pushing out these messages, uh, for Ross as, as well. He is one of us. I, I like that. Uh, Absolutely is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is one of well, us. You sound like you have a very good mother. Um, I, it's amazing how many people come up to me and say their mother wouldn't do what I do. Right. <laughs> they, they're like, you got in trouble? You handle. But, um, but then others say their mothers would. But it is, as a mom, it's like you do feel so connected. It's really, it is like it's you. And um, so I'm doing time along with him. Yeah. And so is our family. You know, it's, it's everyone, but, um, there is, he told me once, he said, I was talking to a bunch of guys, uh, in prison and they all said the person who always stands by and fights for them is their mom, it's the moms. And, uh, that's not always true, but I think a, a lot of times it's true. Oh, and it's always, you know, um, when, you know, when you watch uh, Saving Private Ryan, the guy's dying, he's calling for his mom or, you know, it, it's a common thing you hear about met grown men when, you know, they, uh, it's almost like an instinctual uh, thing, you know, to, yeah. be, to be somebody, you know, you can rely on. So that's definitely yeah. uh, uh, valuable. Um, mm -hmm. I guess we're coming close to a wrap up here. Do you guys have any other uh, last questions? Kurt? I was just curious, uh, how, like, how does Ross do when he's in a violent place like that? I know he probably errors more towards trying to add value to the situation. So like, I know he's done some teaching outreach and stuff like that, but is that how he goes about communicating with people when he's in a place where there might be a higher likelihood of violent people around him? Yeah, he learned a lot of precautions and he was taken under the wing of a couple of guys who, you know, um, took me and kind of gave him the ropes and that sort of thing. But Ross is very generous. You're, you, you hit on something because he'll, 
know, he'll write a letter for somebody or he'll, and he's easygoing too, is the other thing. He doesn't get involved with any of the politics. There's tons of politics in prison. Everybody's, mm-hmm. you know, got some scheme or something. It's nothing but time. Did any of that doesn't do drugs, doesn't, or drug, you know, comes along with that, doesn't get in debt or loan money. All of the things that can, that really lead to the, most of the, a lot of the violence. And, um, doesn't mean he's a pushover, you know, or anything, but it's, it's kind of keeping to, to himself and a few friends. And, you know, he, he was very well liked. He was very well liked, um, but he is likable. So, you know, and he's easygoing and he's very accepting of people. And I think they, they perceive that. Yeah. You know, Joe Joe Jurgensen and um, Spike Cohen have also mentioned that they just, a blanket, um, you know, reprieve for anybody convicted of a nonviolent crime too. So I think that's a good position to, to take. And uh, when you think, when I think of Ross too, I also think of just all the other people in, in our jails, you know, that are in, in yes. a similar situation too. Uh, he just happens to be the guy who's like, we have the most in common with, cause he was into Austrian economics. He probably created a bunch of Austrian experts and libertarians on along the way. So, uh, but I, you know, I think that w- what would you recommend that, you know, other than signing the petition and, and other things like that, what would you recommend that we, we advocate or put our time and effort into um, okay. to help people like Ross? Yeah, thanks. And, and yeah, I mean, I completely agree with uh, Joe and the whole libertarian stand of nonviolent people. Look, we, as Ross said, it's so old fashioned to put, to put people in dungeons, essentially. We could be putting an ankle bracelet on them and they could be doing payback at least, you know, it's like nonviolent people do not be needing to be in there. Uh, I agree. Um, but uh, as, as regards helping, if you, you know, I, I always ask people, if you have any political connections, please get in touch with me. And it doesn't even have to be high level White House stuff. You never know what one person will know or who they'll know. Cause right now it's more like getting that kind of support. We have an amazing widespread support page uh, on our website of some very prominent and eminent people, organizations. That's all a product of networking and, and having people become aware of the case. Also following us on social media, helping us set the narrative straight because it's always lots of times people need to be enlightened, uh, spreading the word. I mean, all of those things. And of course the petition, but that's another tool. And, um, you know, we, we always need to raise money, but that's just a given. We have a big donate button <laughs> because we still have several lawyers working on different things. Um, but basically, um, you know, just, Like the, some people come up with really great ideas, like put up a billboard in Times Square, you know, but that's very expensive, but he did it. Um, So any ideas you guys have too, I mean, you know, um, but basically I think it's getting the word, keeping him alive, keeping him, not preventing him from being forgotten. I think that one of my big fears had been that Ross will, I can't let Ross be forgotten. You know, I can't. And luckily for him, I have a big mouth, but I can go out there and, you know, uh, talk about it and, and keep, keep at it because it's so easy to forget people in prison. They're just kind of gone. You know, it's so easy. And, you know, it's been a while now and uh, he's on his seventh year. So, you know, that's a big part of it too. But I so appreciate you guys' support. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, keep quiet about it ourselves. We have pretty big mouths here in terms of uh, <laughs> kinds of things. Uh, we'll continue to spread the word. I'll keep Ross Thank in my you. prayers. Thank uh, you. With those listening, uh, stay liberated. Check out Ross, freeross.org. Get off my property. Prank guns, not money. <laughs> <laughs>